YouTube, what it do? 86 got your fix. Just hope you guys is doing well out here in this crazy, crazy world, man. Got a lot of stuff to say, but maybe that'll be for another day, another time. Um, so let's hop on it. Um, if you guys see my other video, I had a uh, air leak in the top portion, the dampening valve, electronic dampening valve of the air shock and the W211 2005 Mercedes E-Class. I'm pretty sure other Mercedes as well. If your um, shock has, I think the tall tail signs, if it has the electronic plug-in, then it has the dampening valve in it. But you don't have to uh, change the whole shock if you find an air leak somewhere on that top portion. Um, you could just swap it out. And I also found that you don't even have to take off the shock to swap out that part as well. Uh, you could do it right there on the car and save you some time and money because you're not buying the whole shock. You're just buying the little dampening valve that I'm going to show you guys. Um, but with that being said, I already swapped out the part. Uh, I made a video, had my tripod all set up, and the angle was a little bit off because I was rushing to get done that I didn't quite catch the the shock in the frame so my bad but at least i can talk to y'all and um i can walk y'all through it because there's no videos actually showing uh this being swapped out which sucks because i wanted to get that out there so uh let's hop to it and i'll show you guys how to do it and what to do. So, uh, it's gonna be a quickie. Let's pop the hood. All right, so this was the one that I um, swapped out. And it's this dampening valve. This piece comes off. You do not have to uh, uh, take off the whole shot. And here goes the part and what it looks like. And if you see my other videos, um, it was a slow leak right at this top portion. So basically, like, uh, you know, you sit overnight and I come out the, the suspension on this side was very low. You know, I can drive around the whole day, a few hours, the car can sit, no problem. But when it sits like eight to 10 hours, I had a problem. So I bought this piece and as you see, taking it out, you're going to cause some, uh, scrapes scuffling um if you want to there's three of these notches so there's definitely a special tool i don't know why this camera is not focusing that good there's three notches so there is a special tool um but i'll show you what i use pretty much just big old channel locks that can fit in this notch and turn it now, you guys are on your own. So, the shock is under pressure. Make sure you release all the air, air out the shock. So, you're going to need a 10 millimeter. Take off your airline. Disconnect your electrical plug. Now, they say with the 9 volt battery, I was unsuccessful. But there's three pins, the one at the bottom and the one at the middle. If you jump that with a nine volt battery, it will open up this dampening valve 
which you can see it right here. But I can push down on this, and that's what opens. And there's uh, probably like a cause of magnetic field that pulls up this plunger and it opens to let air in and out. Uh, I was unsuccessful with um, jumping. I felt like I wasn't getting enough power. I could have used another battery to release the air out of the shock. So what I did use was uh, I got a I don't know if you guys have one but I got a power probe and you can hook this up to a battery and with this I can push this button and supply 12 volts to the actual shock and that's how I did it and and I use these channel locks I actually use two to put it back on so you supply power to the bottom and the middle one and let all the air out all the way the whole both ends drop to the floor it let out air on that side too because the computer was fluctuating because this one was losing so much air that it dumped the air out of that one too so both shocks was on the ground but i think if i would have had a jack stand on this side it probably would have let air out of just this one and that one would have been fine because the computer would have realized that the car is still at level right so after you let out all the air then you can you know get your channel locks and fit it into you know that notch or maybe i can show you so you can see this notch and that notch and and see how we're in there nice and smooth and it's only like a quarter turn uh, counterclockwise and as you see uh, this is where it stops so when you open it you're gonna quarter turn and then it's gonna hit this back part and then that's when you just pull it straight up so the orientation of this plug is like this right with the airline so you're gonna quarter turn it, boom, to about right there. You'll feel where it stops. And then you just basically pull it up and pry it out. Now, be careful because this unit did not come with any uh, O-rings. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's a teeny one that rides right here. And this teeny one, I think, is more of like the gas, or not gas, dust, keeps the dust from getting down in there. So when you pop it, now, when you do that half quarter turn, now you're trying to grab and pry it up. And you can sort of see the gasket. So if you're going to be reusing your O-rings, you don't want to destroy it. But in order for me to get this out, I then had to get um, a flathead. So then I had to get a flathead and I can see the gasket. So I was getting right above the gasket and pry it out just a little bit. And then I was able to pop the rest off, um, moved over my old uh, O-rings, 
put on the new one, kind of put a little bit of grease in it. I also blew this out, a little dust or whatever debris. Now when I put it back in, I, you know, smash it down, uh, you know, get your orientation out where it was at. This is locked right here, it was unlocked. You know, push it down as far as I can. Then I, I tapped the corners with the rubber mallet and it was very hard to uh, lock it in. So what I did was I grabbed two channel locks. I put, you know, one here and another one on this side and used two hands to kind of uh, lock it in place. And to get better room, I took off this. And to get access to jumping the wires, I pulled up this because you can get a better better angle this way but once when you take off this uh there's a battery under here that i i hooked up my power probe to so i can jump this out to decompress the shock so this is you know advice do it yourself but you gotta release the pressure there's gonna be a lot of pressure in these shocks so I'm just telling you guys what to do, but I'm not liable. I'm not there with you. This is no means taking credit, but you have to uh, release the air pressure. So you see these uh, grooves, so it slides down and then you turn and lock. And then you see it's right there. So you, when you push it down and you turn and lock, so I think it's about four that uh, locks it. So just be careful because there's a real thin O-ring right here that you can destroy if you were prying and digging and you and you destroy it with the, the flathead. So be careful on that. Um, other than that, it's, it's very doable. Uh, the test was, you know, eight hours later, my shock is now working or not losing air pressure and i think that's pretty much about it so sorry i didn't couldn't make the video but at least was like well let me show you guys how to do it uh a new shot by itself is probably like i think two something this valve, if you do have a leak, um, you can have a leak inside. Um, you can have a leak around the top. Also check around the seal. But if this the part, if it is up this top part, just replace this uh, electronic dampening valve and you're good to go. So 86 got your fix. If you got any questions, um, let me know and we'll work through it. Peace.